welcome home. Today I want to share with you how I made this cardboard fiddle for my son's kindergarten class. I actually have to make a duplicate one. I'm sorry about the shaking. I'm trying to make sure I get this in full view. Um, I have to make a duplicate one for his class for the play that they're going to do, which is Hey Diddle Diddle. And last year he played the cat in the fiddle and the same teacher requested that I make another fiddle for them. So I just wanted to show you how the original looks. We're going to do this, but it kind of ended up looking like a violin, <laughs> but it had great stage presence. But what we're going to do is we're going to make it a little bit smaller. Um, but use the same techniques. And just to let you know, I'm going to use cardboard, black paint, some yarn, and that's about it. You will also probably need a bowl to trace out the curves of your shape. And box cutters, very important. So let's begin. Okay, I won't really go over dimensions too much with you because it all depends on what you want to do and how big you want your instrument. But um, I have a box of cardboard here, as you can see here. It's a nice size box. And I'm basically going to take the bowl and I'm going to trace it out halfway. So I have a generic shape of how I want the fiddle to be. And again, I want this one to be a little bit smaller. So there you go. Um, because there's a nice curve, kind of shaped like a woman, how it goes around in and out again. I'm gonna use the same bowl to try to mimic that shape. And what we'll do is we'll end up kind of playing with this to get the correct dimensions to make sure it's even on both sides. But right now I'm just gonna eye it to make sure. Remember, you can't be perfect in everything you do. So sometimes you just have to try your hardest and hope for the best. <laughs> now, if you can see here, I don't know, maybe I should have used a marker. Let me go get a marker, I'll be right back. Okay, so we're gonna use the bow, and I'm gonna try this again with pencil, but I don't think you all could see it. And hopefully you'll be able to see this better. I hope I don't mark up my um, bow, but it is what it is. You do what you have to do, right? Okay, so I just go and I mark and I go halfway around the bowl. Because I want that uh, initial curve. And I have to make sure that it's even. If you can see here, they're not even with each other. And I'm going to attempt to make them um, make it a little bit smaller. So what I'm going to do I'm going to draw a line just kind of eyeing it going in so that I know that I kind of want to go in a tad bit maybe about a half inch to an inch in. so I can start the other curve that goes around this way. Okay, sorry about that. So far, I have this set up to right here. And I just drew a line going in right here. 
And you also will need a ruler because I failed to say that in the beginning. Nothing has to be perfect. Please keep that in mind. That's how this was made. Playing around with cardboard. And then we're going to attempt to form this curve. And we're going to actually start it with using the same bowl to achieve. Now we want this curve to be about, I do like it a little bit fatter. The current one that I have already made, it's about mm, five inches. Since I'm making this one a little bit smaller, we're just gonna take it down maybe to four inches. How about that? The thicker it is, the stronger it will be for the kids when they have it so that if, when they're swinging it around, playing with it, trying to hit their friends on the head and whatnot, <laughs> it may not break, break. So what we're gonna do is just kind of make a little guideline so that you know how far you want your circles to go in, okay? So we're gonna take the bowl back out we're gonna match it to the end of the line over here. If you can see that. We're gonna match it to the end of the line right here. And we're gonna come around, okay? And again, the, the final shape won't take place until you're really cutting it, so. Just be aware, nothing has to be perfect, okay? And by me using this fat marker, I um, have to account for the thickness of the felt tip. So if you can see here, it's going to start going in. And what I'm gonna end up doing is probably end up cutting it a little bit further out just to kind of give it a cooler look to it. I do cut two different layers of this. So if you do decide to use a marker, this will be the inside layer. So you will not be able to see this black marker. So don't worry about that part, okay? And then on this side, I'm going to also bring it in. There's the four inch mark that we had. The four inch mark right here is right here. So I was able to succeed in doing that. Again, Just go around, let's see what happens. There you go. So it's starting to take shape for you. So this is us, just us making a pattern of what we want the instrument to look like. So we have a nice guide. When we're going to cut it out, we'll know exactly what we wanna do. Okay, the next thing we need to do is form the body of it. So now we're gonna do another circle. We're trying to attempt to do this part. Keeping in mind, we want it a little bit smaller. So they're gonna end up connecting. This will end up getting, this mark will end up getting cut off and we're just gonna play with it and see what happens, okay? Again, nothing is perfect. There we go. 
So now you can see that you're starting to get your shape. So depending upon how you want your fiddle to look, how extravagant you want it to look, if you want points right here or not, this is where you can go ahead and do that. Or you can just leave it and let the lines just hit. Or you can cut out points like I did. Um, it's all on you and what you want to do and how detailed you want to try to make this. It doesn't affect at all how you cut it out. So, and as a matter of fact, I, I might just leave it like that because it just it'll be really simple to do it like that. And then the next thing that I want to have built onto it is the arm of the instrument and. If you can see here, can you see right here? I painted it black for a shadow, but it's a double part. But it's actually, because I didn't plan for it initially with this one, I have it built onto the second piece. But what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and just put this in right now so we can have it, so we have a double layer of it. And if I wanted to make it raised, I can do that also but we're just going to go ahead and make this a part of this instrument so that if when we do cut out the duplicate copy we we'll already have that piece built in so it's good to go and what we're going to need to do for that this one which i really didn't like it turned out kind of fat it's about three and a half inches and I just thought that was just kind of too chunky so let's go ahead and do you do like three inches or so maybe what do you think about that three inches so that'll be like right there And I have to make sure that I get this nice and straight so that it's not like off size or what have you. And since I haven't measured, and by all means, you can be as precise as you want to be. I choose not to because I don't feel like it. It's a Sunday afternoon and I'm making a fiddle. So it's going to be all good, no matter how it turns out. <laughs> And then if I don't like this because it's too skinny, I can also make it a little bit bigger. Okay, let's see, what you think? Not thick enough? We can always make it a little bit thicker on both sides to ensure that it's even because we definitely don't want this to be lopsided, right? That looks good to me. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do, I'm gonna put you on pause. I'm gonna draw it a little bit longer past this um, crease. Hopefully it doesn't give me that much of a problem. Uh, we'll see how this works out going pat past the crease. I'm gonna make it a little bit longer and then I will come back and show you how to cut this out. And then we'll use this as a pattern for the next piece. Okay, I'll be right back.
did it. It's done. Thank God. It took forever. And it's not as pretty as I wanted it, but we're gonna make it pretty. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna cut up some squares out of the cardboard. And we're going to use the hot glue gun and stack the squares up to form like a little tower. And this is gonna help add some dimension to the neck or the arm of the instrument. Just remember that it's up to you how many squares you stack up. It all depends on how high and how tall you want your arm of your instrument to stand out. Next, I'm gonna use some Scotch craft glue to close the body of the fiddle up. I'm not gonna use the hot glue because my hot glue gun is terrible, it doesn't work well, and the glue tends to dry too fast, and I just don't work that fast. So with this glue, the craft glue, I can be precise as to how I want my pieces to come together, and it does dry quicker than most. So I'm going to go ahead and use this to fasten my project together. Now my cardboard piece has a natural fold to it at the arm and I'm gonna use this to my benefit and I'm going to kind of bend it back a little bit so that I can form a pocket where I can add the squares that I stacked up, I can add them between the two layers of the arm. This way giving me some dimension. So I'm going to bend and score it with a scissors on one side and do the other side as well. So that when I do add the cardboard squares, they will be separated and stand out from each other. The craft glue does dry really fast, but the best way to keep the fiddle closed is by using binder clips. I just used an assorted amount of sizes to keep the sides closed as it dried. And then I decided to go ahead and play with the arm while the body was drying. And um, go ahead and glue that together and bind that also shut. Next, we're going to need two new layers of cardboard that we're going to add to the neck and we're going to have to go ahead and cut that out and this is how we're going to attach the string or yarn to the fiddle. They also are going to be beneficial to the fiddle because they're going to make the arm stronger so it's not flipping and flopping back and forth. Also at this point, we're going to go ahead and make the pegs for the fiddle and we're going to do two layers 
for the pegs each. Using the Scotch Craft Glue, we're going to go ahead and glue the two layers of each peg together and then put it inside of the neck of the fiddle. Now it's the fun time painting and we're going to use black paint and just go for it. We're going to paint the whole neck and all the pegs black. So make sure that you go ahead and get all the nooks and crannies inside of the cardboard black as well. This way when it's viewed from the side, it'll be consistent. Now it's time to make a bridge. It's not that difficult. Basically, I take two strips of cardboard and score them in two different areas of the cardboard to form a blocked shape U. So that when you put the flat parts together, their backs together towards each other, it'll make an eye. And once glued, this will be a stable piece that you can make a bridge with. Making the tailpiece of the instrument is really simple. It's about an eighth of the bowl size that we use. It's big on one side and it gradually slopes down to the other side. I did add a small cardboard strip on the smaller side of the tailpiece. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an upholstery needle and sew in my string and tie a knot on one side and then eventually glue it down. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use some hot glue and glue on the tail piece of the instrument. I also am going to use the black paint and paint part of the tail piece and the bridge and go ahead and let that dry for a moment. I attach the bridge to the body of the, the waist of the instrument with hot glue. And I've also used the craft glue that dries clear to ensure that the strings stay in place on the bridge. So I made like a little dot of craft glue on the bridge and then put my string on top of it to make sure it holds it in place. I go ahead and hot glue everything down to make sure everything is secure at this point. We're nearing the end. I'm 
and gluing down the lower neck of the fiddle just make sure that your strings are in place and are not all tangled up because that can cause a big problem so just take your time make sure all the strings are pulled out and they're tight as possible so it doesn't look too sloppy Once you finish getting the neck together, you can go ahead and paint on some F scrolls on both sides of the waist or body of the instrument. I did mine free form. You can go ahead and make a pattern, whichever way you want to do it, it'll work. Now it's time to make the bow. The original one looks like it's for a cello, it's humongous. We're going to make a smaller version. Put two layers together so that it'll be strong enough for kids. To play with. Once you put your bow together go ahead and paint it however you want to and don't forget to sign your fiddle because it is a work of art and you took your time to make it. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. Happy decorating and happy fiddling.